Hey everybody, welcome back. Devin, the OG, the original Grognard. Been a while since we've been here and chatted together, hasn't it? I think it's been well over a month. Uh, I've kind of been on a, a slight medical sick leave downtime. As most everybody knows, I have issues with my lungs. I've always had issues with my lungs. And uh, my time in the service did not uh, help the situation much. In fact, it made it even worse. So... I have very susceptible to <clears throat> any colds or anything like that. They get into my lungs. They stay longer, hit me harder, all this other good stuff. Uh, yeah, come to find out, I've been walking around with bronchitis for about a month and finally gotten meds and slowly on the way to recovering. Kind of the reason why you haven't really seen any videos from me. I uh, My coughing has been really, really, really bad. It's just within the last week or so, it's actually getting to the point where I can go more and you know, five or ten minutes without a slight cough or some tightness in my chest or my lungs. But I'm back! Yay! And uh, I was going to jump back into doing a board game, but unfortunately right now my table is a little bit preoccupied with a bunch of games sitting on it. Uh, you can kind of see over my shoulder I've got a bunch of games sitting back there that, well, usually aren't there. Long story short, buddy of mine is moving and... From a house and into apartment and is trying to downsize so wants to get rid of a good chunk of his games and since he doesn't know how to do the ebay or facebook or anything like that to sell i get i got elected to do it the good thing is well <laughs> that's not that's saying what the good thing is but the bad thing is the man's a hoarder i love jerry to death but the man is a hoarder and there are boxes upon boxes upon boxes piled in his house. So we were, I went over there earlier this week, grabbed what I could, what we could reach, and brought him home. It was like 30, 40 games. And he's probably got two, three, four times as much just buried. Supposedly this week he's going to have movers come out. They're going to be moving through. We're getting, I'm going to be going over there. We're going to go through all the boxes, get a bunch of the rest of the games. And then I'm going to try to sell them on eBay for him. Um, and some of this stuff is old school. I mean, we're talking old school SPI. I mean, well, you can kind of see some of the titles back there. Old school Avalon Hill, uh, Sword in the Stars. I mean, just a lot of Simulations Canada. A lot of good wargaming stuff. It's hell stuff I ain't even heard of before. The game Machiavelli doesn't even have a publisher or a designer on it. I've never even heard of it. First edition Junta. Not the yellow box Junta. The version of Junta before the yellow box. First edition Cosmic Encounter. Um... So the good thing is he's got a lot of really cool games. Bad thing is he's a hoarder and the boxes are shit. Components inside are really good condition. There's some of them that are unpunched. But the boxes are just crap. If anybody's interested in actually getting a list and seeing what is there, and if you want to purchase it, email me at steelwhip2001 at yahoo.com. That's S-T-E-E-L-W-H-I-P-2001 at yahoo. I'll get you a list. And hopefully that list will be expanded later this week. Anyways, so that's why we are, we're not doing any tabletop gaming. And so <clears throat> we're jumping onto the computer. I'm thinking maybe... <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I've got uh, Fields of Glory 2. I picked that up. Uh, the game is fun. It's pretty. It's a hell of a lot better than the first Fields of Glory was. There's only a couple DLCs for right now. And one of the DLCs has kind of my interest, which is... Uh, uh, ancient uh, the, the Roman Republic era, I kind of like that. The other two expansions, eh, not so much. I'm waiting for more of the DLCs to come out, mostly uh, High Middle Ages, uh, the Viking Wars, and the Crusades. Those are three areas of, of, of the Fields of Glory era that I really am looking forward to. We're probably going to be seeing some videos on that. So the only other game I could do on the computer is, and if you haven't guessed yet, Battletech, the new game from Paradox and Hairbrain Studios. To say I like Battletech is an understatement. To say I enjoy Battletech is an understatement. In 1984, there was a little hobby store down in Renton that my folks would occasionally take me to when I was a wee lad in high school, the 9th, 10th grade so I didn't have a car yet. So I, we only got, I only was only able to get down there every once in a while. But it was really the only local game store, Heritage Bookshop. And it was a bookshop, but it was also, you know, had a huge gaming area as well. And when I went in there one time, I spotted this game from a company called Fasa called 
battle droids. And it had this big, gigantic mech on the front of it. And it was a mech from one of my favorite cartoons at the time, Robotech. And it's like, oh my god, this is giant mechs and robots beat the crap out of each other. I gotta get this game. I was 14. What do you expect? We're excitable at that age, right? So it took me a few months to save up the $20 to buy the box set and then get my folks to drive me back down there. By that time, the game had changed title to Battletech. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a Lucas Arts was trying to patent the droid title, and Fossil was a small company didn't want to try to challenge Lucas Arts on the on the droid trademark. Of course, later on, uh, Lucas Arts would eventually go on to lose that trademark battle with someone else. I don't know. So, Battle Droids had to change their name to BattleTech. They actually even also had to change a lot of the mech names. If any of the original with the original BattleTech, uh, the names of the mechs were actually different in Battle Droids. In uh, BattleTech, we have the Locust. In Battle Droids, it was known as the Flea. Uh, it, the Warhammer was known as the Battle Axe. There were a few other changes. They just did a bunch of name changes. And, of course, if you know BattleTech at all, you'll also know that a lot of the mechs in the original BattleTech were based off Robotech mechs that I'm not even going to get into the whole legal issue with it, but at the time, Harmony Gold, which was a U.S. distributor of Robotech, kind of had the rights to the mecha designs because they were licensing from Konami International in Japan. And well, suffice to say, there's been a lot of issues with what have now been, been, been labeled as the unseen mechs. Harmony Gold basically has kicked up a shitstorm. Everybody, anybody, anybody tries to use these certain mechs from Battletech in Battletech games. The funny thing is Konami, you know, the guys who did original Battletech, oh, we don't care. I mean, you want to use our mech designs? Go ahead. You know, we don't care. But Harmony Gold, because they stuck their nose in it and think they have rights to it because they were licensing from Japan for 30 years, 84, 85, 33 years has been preventing Battletech from using the unseen. And that's why they're called the unseen now, you know, the Marauder, uh, the Shadow Hawk, or not the Shadow Hawk, the Wasp, the Phoenix, uh, the Marauder. There's like eight or nine of the Battletech unseen mechs that just can't be used in Battletech. And however, Harmony Gold has recently lost a couple really big losses. And this could pave the way for the unseen to make it back into Battletech games. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm diverging off. I'm going to history. Probably not going to see much gameplay in this video. This is just going to be my, me pont pontificating on, on my love for Battletech. Anyways, so I picked up Battletech and instantly fell in love with the game. Now, I'd already been gaming for four or five years by this point. You know, Squad Leader, you know, Panzer Leader, Panzer Blitz, Avalon Hill games, SPI games, Starfleet Battles. I love Avalon Hill games. I love SPI games. I love Starfleet Battles. I consumed Battletech because it was kind of... Uh, it, Focused right at that, all right, here's this cartoon that I love, Robotech. And this is a game of big mechs bashing the crap out of each other. And it was kind of <laughs> that juvenile, it was targeted for the juvenile audience. I don't care what anybody says. Battletech is really, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, your, it's, your, it's your high fantasy in space. And I loved it. I bought everything for the game. I mean, literally everything. All the fanzines I could get my hands on, all the books, the games, the modules, everything. Played it. I went into the service, played it in the service. A little bit turned off when the 2050 tech readout came out, but I figured, hey, all right, it's been a few years since Battletech came out. They need to advance it. All right, we got Gauss rifles and, you know, pulse lasers and close in weapon systems and C3I networks and all, all that good stuff. Like, all right, so yeah, some of these mechs are kind of cool. All right, it's still Battletech. And then Fossa introduced the clans. I cannot tell you how disappointed I am when Fasa introduced the clans. Clans are a cancer on the game. Always have been, always will be. Typically, the worst type of people in the world, typically your GW-style players, are also the people who play clans. Now, let me explain why I think this. First command I was at, pretty big, good-sized ship. About, <coughs> excuse me, about 400 sailors on board and about 20 or 30 of Sorex, the gamers. We played Battletech on board. One of the guys that we used to play with 
crappy player. I mean, we do lance on lance fights, company on company fights, you know, equal mega, equal mech tons, whatever. This guy just couldn't win to save his life. He just wasn't a good player. We just do stupid stuff. So the clans came out and it's like, all right, well, let's go ahead and give it a try. So we go ahead and it's like, all right, let's give this, this kid, you know, a, a star, five mechs of medium clan mechs. And, you know, all right, well, looking at it, mm, all right, we, 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 we get, a, you know, a heavy medium company of inner sphere mechs. So basically five clan mechs against 12 inner sphere mechs. And the clan mechs just wait for it. There was a basic design flaw in how the clan mechs were designed and how they were introduced. And everybody says, well, you're supposed to use the rules of engagement and the bidding. Nobody ever fucking did that. Nobody ever fucking used the bidding rules of engagement in selecting mechs clan versus inner sphere and they all just oh we just oh i don't want to play with that that's dumb rules let's just go tonnage on tonnage you can't do that with the clans pound for pound a clan mech is probably you know 75 percent to 100 percent stronger than an average tonnage uh inner sphere mech. I, I did a breakdown one time the uh the uh, the clan vulture v6 which was a, a clan uh, mech 65 ton at six six packs on it and a couple of medium lasers it could put out, <clears throat> excuse me, I did the bath with, you know, the double heat sinks and everything, and it could put out more firepower for a sustained amount of time than a, a light lance of inner sphere max. Pound for pound, the inner sphere just could not match with the clans. And clan players and GW players tend to like the overloaded, bulky oh this is the biggest the best i gotta run with this and the, the clan just attracted those type of players it took years for fossa to come out with what they would eventually be known as the ppv the battle point values which basically started breaking everything down into point values like a miniatures game but by that point the game had already you know done, i'm done with it I'm, I'm, I'm this clan shit is crap i'm 30 25 all the way that's all i want to play every once in a while maybe 30 50 but fuck the clans plain and simple the problem is, this was in the 90s, and all the games that were coming out were also all based on the clans. So whereas there had been a lot of good Battletech computer games over the years, uh, Mech Warrior, Mech Commander, well, and really Mech Warrior was more just kind of a first-person shooter, the Mech Warrior series. Mech Commander was pretty good. That's where it was kind of turn-based. But there hasn't been a decent turn-based Battletech game on the computer ever. But now we have one, and it's 3025 era. And I'm in love with this game. Um, like I said, Paradox Studios, or Hairbrain Studios and Paradox got together this Kickstarter game. Uh, they had some really cool Kickstarter rewards for it. Um, but I, I just, I, and I, I will just say this right now. This is the closest computer game that feels like the tabletop 3025 edition that I've ever played. And that right there, <laughs> it means I love it. Now, there are two components to playing the game. You got your, your, you got your, 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 your planet side mech on mech combat. We'll be getting to that in a little bit. But what I think what really causes this game to shine is the Lance mercenary management. Now, you're only, you're, you're, you're reduced to just running one Lance of mechs, four mechs. And, you know, you can make, some, you can make your Lance composition, whatever you want, coming down to if you can find the mechs or salvage the mechs to operate. You start off with the game with a leopard dropship, so you only have four mechs. Eventually, through the storyline, you get a bigger, bigger dropship. And this is the dropship I have right now. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't look like anything can, and it's not a union. It's not a leopard. This is this is something special for the storyline to deal with it. It's called the Argo. And for those of you who are, you know, uh, uh, old uh, Star Blazers <laughs> fans, I don't know if that was kind of a nod to the old Star Blazers, but I think it, I think it could. Um. This is the this this is this is the dropship that I'm operating out of right now. As you can kind of see, this is kind of the the overall uh, mercenary management screen. Uh, so far, I'm in week 100, day six. The game ticks over in day turns. Every 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 tick is one day, and you have to really really manage your finances, especially in the early game. Manage your time and keep paying your people. So right now, I'm kind of doing okay financially. 100 weeks into the game. Uh, I got 22 days right here for the next uh, 
<coughs> before my next monthly payment. Basically, you have to pay uh, upkeep and everything at the end of every month. So I'm currently at 347,000 credits a month. That's for mech, mech uh, maintenance, pilot's fees, ship fees, a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, and you got all these little boxes here, which basically is how many months uh, of financing you currently have. So I've got several months. So, I mean, unless I get into some real trouble, I'm actually doing pretty good on it. And you've kind of got your morale of your lance right here. They call it a company, but you're only running a lance. I was initially put off that it was only going to be a lance because, you know, I always loved playing bigger fights. But... As you get into the game, it's it's a turn-based game, and the way I've got it set up is it kind of a little bit slow, but there's got a lot of cinematic moments to it. We'll be getting to that. Uh, I kind of like the pace. If the game was 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 company size, you know, some of the battles I'm doing now take me 45 minutes to an hour to play. Imagine trying to do a scenario, you know, three or four times as long with a, with a company. So initially, I was a little bit offset that it was only going to be Lance on Lance on whatever the AI is. The AI always has more. Uh, rather than a company, but within the frameworks of the game, the Lance works fine. You don't need to run a company. That that would be more micromanagement. So theory crafting originally didn't like the Lance idea. Actually, getting into the gameplay, I like the Lance idea. Uh, so there's my morale and med tech and medical. It's basically the bigger your met your repair bays and the bigger your medical bays are, the more you can heal your pilots and repair your ships. This is kind of just a, a schematic of the Argo, and this is you know which is right here. <laughs> the first button and this is the hiring hall in the store so you go to the hiring hall where whatever system you're in it brings up uh you can hire more mech pilots and i think you can start off with uh eight mech pilots and then there are some expansions you can get in the in on the argo that'll increase the number of berths problem is even if you don't use the pilots you still got to pay their monthly fee so i only run about five or six pilots one of the cool things, occasionally you'll see a, a mech pilot that's got this little blue icon right here. They had a Kickstarter backing, and I don't know what it was, I think $500 donation to it, where the backer would actually get to design um, a pilot that would become a mercenary in the game. So occasionally you'll come across these Kickstarter backers, and they've got these backstories that they wrote up, and they designed it, the, uh, the, the, the portrait of the character. I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Uh, but, you know, there's always a bunch of different pilots with their different skills. And if you need to hire a new pilot, you And then there's the store where if you want to buy stuff. Most of the gear you're going to get, you'll just take a salvage off the battlefield. Because believe me, you get into a fight, your weapons get destroyed a lot. So you're always switching out weapons and replacing weapons. Um, but if you do need to buy something specific, you do it. You can, you can buy it, you know. All the different types you know you can just buy weapons buy equipment oh hello what's that Coventry armor what is that i have not seen that Ooh. Ooh. now i will say right now if there's any item that has the, a plus or a double plus or a triple plus it's a special uh equipment 54 000. Ooh. i may get that i've got one of my mech pilots who's a big uh, big puncher Actually, go up. Ooh, and a mag range finder. Ooh, yeah. 25 meter view distance, 70,000. One slot, no tonnage. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to buy that. New equipment available. Let's see the Coventry the actuators. I'm not seeing any tonnage cost associated with it, but 54,000 per plus 15 damage. Yeah, we're going to buy that. I need to check the stores more often. Um, and you can kind of buy mechs. You don't really buy full, complete mechs. Uh, you buy partial salvage mechs. And it takes three parts. It doesn't matter what three parts they are. They're just generically saying you need three parts of a mech to be able to build a full one. So, you know, right, like right here, we got a partial mech salvage of a, a FS9H fire starter. So that would be one part for 369000 If I had two other parts... I'd be able to put it together and build it and, and run a regular mech. Partial salvage for a Griffin. All right, cool. Uh, but so that's buying, and you can turn around and sell whatever you want. Uh, I've got uh, any mechs that uh, you you, you end up salvaging a lot of mechs and then putting together. Take the three salvage parts, put them together. You can either use them to run in your lance, or you can turn around and sell them. So right now, I've just got 
in my bay for sale. I've got a single blackjack. Now I'm holding on to this blackjack. That's actually the original mech that you as the pilot starts off with. So, you know, it's kind of sentimental value. So I'm holding on to the blackjack. But I could sell it for 300000 Um, And then, you know, all the different in gear that I've just accumulated as salvage. I like, ooh, ooh an SRM-6. I need to look at my own gear. I don't know. <laughs> Some, some of the, well, I also just got out of a big fight, so this, this may be new, some of the new gear. That might be, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a standard SRM-6, but it's plus 50% critical. Yeah, we're going to have to mount that. So this is where you buy and you sell everything. And as you can see with my finances, I'm at $6 million, so I can afford pretty much anything I want at this point. I'm not buying anything other than those two cool parts. And you've got your command center, which is basically, yeah, and you've got NPCs that you can talk to. There's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, trees, uh, conversation trees. It's not really full voice acted. Whenever you're talking to someone, like let's go talk to uh, Darius, you know, he'll say you got all these you know different options, but he doesn't say them. Pretty much only the time they speak is when that's it. So if you're expecting a full voice acted, it's not that way. It's partially voice acted, and you know what? It doesn't bother me. I don't care. I don't need it to be fully voice acted because uh, voice acting adds a lot of time and a lot of money into a game. Uh, but, you know, this this is where the heart of the game is. This is your contract. Now, there's storyline contracts that come up every once in a while that you do to to uh, continue the storyline. There is an overarching storyline. I'm not going to get into spoilers on that. But this is the heart of the game right here is your contracts. They just kind of a quick look at it. I've got three contracts that I could take. Uh, Pride and Vanity, Smash and Grab, Take the Bait. And there's, you know, when you get down to it, there are four or five basic different variations. Kill, Capture, Escort, Escape, and uh, Hold. <laughs> those are your basic mission types. You're going to find those mission types any game you play. But it's how they add the chrome to it. Now, what does all this mean? Well, you take a look at it. I'll tell you who your employer is. The Urano Restoration is who the who who, who is offering the job, and uh, their the entire storyline takes kind of out on the periphery of, uh, of Liao and uh, Merrick space. Um, so you're kind of doing a whole bunch of stuff in the periphery. I haven't even gone into the inner sphere yet. Uh, so and the Urano Restoration is basically the storyline that you're helping along with. So you've got the the the. Max pay. Now that's not the all the pay you're going to get. That's the max potential pay you can get for it. But one of the things that you have to look. So 751,000. That's actually not a bad payment. Max salvage. That's something you have to really, really pay attention to. That determines how much salvage you get at the end of a fight. Now this is saying four of 18. Basically that means that you will get four choices from all the salvage. And then the rest of it will be random, randomly distributed between you and your employer. So like here, Smash and Grab has a 5 slash 22. So I'll be able to pick five pieces of salvage that I want. And then the rest of it will be distributed it randomly up to 22 points. Same thing with this. Take the bait, max salvage, 314. This is a lot of times where you get your mech parts. Uh, like I was saying earlier, you need three salvage mech parts to be able to put together a good full mech. This is where you're going to get most of them. You can sometimes buy them, but they're few and far between. Most of the time, you're going to be getting your parts through salvage. Uh, so there's max pay, max salvage. Now, this is says it's in another system and that the contractor will pay to transport you, which is good because you don't have to use your own finances to travel there because that can get real expensive real quick. Uh, and then basically the difficulty is is how much tonnage it's supposed to require you, you need to be able to pull it off basically i think two and a half skulls is like 200 tons and then so and we can see smash and grab and take the bait are a lot more expensive and then of course you know they've got the basic rundown right here for like pride and vanity max pay 750,000. max salvage four of 18. max reputation uh you get reputation for for succeeding in missions and that's your mech reputation board, mercenary reputation board. And the higher your reputation is, the better pilot you'll be able to eventually hire. Uh, and then, okay, family associated with local pirate organizations have been threatening military action against, the, against their restoration neighbors on Ryan's fate. Yada, yada, yada. So if you decide to do that, go ahead and click the negotiate button. <coughs> and then you have a little message from your con from, from your employer, potential employer. And this is where this is where I have one of the parts that I really think now you get to negotiate the specifics of the contract. So you got payment, salvage, and rep bonus. And you can take these sliders and move the sliders. So say right right now the base payment is four hundred and nine thousand. All right, 
say I don't want to get paid that much, but I want a rep bonus of plus four. So instead of getting, you know, the normal rep bonus, I'll get an additional plus four rep bonus on it, but it's going to cost me some of my payment. Salvage is two of 10. Well, maybe I want to bump that up to three or 14, which in turn turns down my payment, my end payment. Oh, maybe I maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want both of those. Maybe I want a bigger rep bonus. So it, it's it's three slider bars that you can kind of fiddle and mess with, deciding, okay, well, do I really need the salvage? Do I need the cash up front? Do I need everything? And that is one of the really cool things about this game because it is definitely the game definitely gets into the Merc management side. And then of course, if you want to accept it, get accepted. You go on. So that's the command center. Then of course you have your barracks, where you run your pilots from. Uh, and these are the pilots that I've got right now. Four, five, six pilots. I'm only running six pilots right now. And Steel Whip, that's me. That, that's that's me. This is me personally. And you've got your different skills, gunnery, piloting, guts, tactics. All of them do different things. You get experience points. You spend experience points. Your stats get better. Training confirmed, Commander. Just like that. So now I've got a level nine gunnery, which is a plus 22% base weapon hit chance. It, the game doesn't run the 2d6 like it does in the tabletop. It is it is it is definitely uh, more percentage-based systems, but it's behind the scenes type dice roll, so you don't really notice it. I mean, they've done a well and a good enough job of transferring the 2d6 results to the percentile based. I don't even notice it. So, but then you know these are these are, you know yeah, behemoth and buck. They're my they're my they're my height. They're my uh, behemoth buck and glitch. They're my big uh, my. My heavy hitters, my, my more experienced. I think Behemoth and Glitch have been with me from the beginning. Uh, and then I picked up yep, Tailgate. Man. He's kind of a new guy, but he's injured. If your pilots get injured, they actually are down. So he's, like here it says healing for 14 days. That means I can't use them at all for 14 days. And I think he only took one wound. You know, <laughs> I, my, you as the pilot, as, as your own personal self, can never die. But if you get four wounds on you, I think that's like 97 days downtime. And you can't do anything for 97 days. It, that's part of the other management. I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but Tailgate is uh, was one of my new highs. I like having a couple extra guys hanging on. You can only take four mechs, so it means you only need four pilots. But if people are wounded, it's always good to have a couple of them. And then Herbagon. I picked him up. I think he was originally supposed to be a recon pilot, but I've spec'd him out to be... Uh, Tactics, which is uh, indirect fire with long-range missiles. He's actually running at a trebuchet right now, and he just sits in the back with his two LR and 15s, just raining death down on people. But I've kind of, I've, but like I said, he, he originally started out. I think he's supposed to be a recon pilot, but I've, I've specced him into the uh, uh, my indirect artillery pilot. But these are the bursts, and it's like here, it's five and sixteen. So I've got five pilots. I can have sixteen pilots, but as you can kind of see, you know, salary thirty-five thousand a month. You don't want to get too crazy because you're going to run out of them. And then you got your mech bay. Your actual mechs are located. And as you start off, you only have one mech bay. And you can have six mechs in that mech bay. You can put stuff into storage, but it takes time to take them out of storage. And you got to rearm them and re-equip them. Um, in fact, if we take a look at what I've got in storage right now, I've got a bunch of stuff in storage. But if you'll notice... These are all parts of mechs. Like I was saying, remember before, you need three parts to a mech to build a full one. So here's like, here's this Commando, a 1B, Commando 1B, 25 tons. I've got one part of three. If I can get two more parts, salvage parts of a Commando 1B, I can put them together and build a, build a, build a Commando. Now, the trick is that not all frames are the same. Good example, Catapult K2, catapult c1 now the k2 version i've you notice these are both catapults but they're different designators i've got one part for a k2 one part for a c3 now the k2 i believe is the ppc armed version it's taken out its lrm packs and has two ppcs in the shoulder and the torso slots whereas the c1 has the 20 packs since they're they're technically the same mech but they're different weapons loadouts it to, for me to be able to put a catapult K2 together or a C1 together, I need to get two parts, two more parts of each one of them. So, and you can have unlimited amount of, of mechs in your in your storage. And then, of course, you know, there's a tab for all your components. 
but this is the, this right here is the main part where you can upgrade uh well anyways sorry, back to what i was thinking this is the main part where you where you uh, uh will work with your mechs at you have six slots initially i usually keep five running because if a mech isn't in storage you actually have to pay maintenance fees on it and maintenance fees can get kind of expensive uh, so if there's no need for it, since you can only take four mechs, there's no need to have an extra two in, in reserve or on the deck. As I like having one on the deck. Now, no icons on any of these. And, of course, you can expand your, your bays, and I'll get, get into that in a little bit. Uh, so you can have multiple bays and have multiple mechs running in them, multiple repairs going on at the time. But I haven't gotten to that upgrade yet. Actually, I am kind of working on it right here. You can see this right here. This is the timeline. These are things that are kind of queued up and will be coming up. So Argo Upgrade Mech Bay 2, it's a ship upgrade, will be ready in seven days. And that'll unlock the second bay here. Uh, and as we can see here, Tailgate, he's out of action for 14 days. And I've got the monthly re monthly finance report, which means I have to pay my monthly dues in 22 days. So anyways, but this is where you're going to be sending a lot of times. These mechs are perfectly good. There's no icons or anything got a griffin a dragon a trebuchet uh jaeger mech and the kentaro but the kentaro has got these these uh, these hashtags on well it got damaged in the last fight you can kind of look down here if my big fat head isn't blocking the screen i don't think it is uh you can see white means it's armor these orange and black hash marks means it took internal structure hits uh, and this is kind of how much internal structure hit it's taken, how much armor it has left, and then some relative how power, firepower, movement, durability. You can kind of use that to compare them to other mechs. And of course, you got different paint jobs that you can throw on them. Oh, you can whatever whatever paint job you want your lamp to be, and you can customize the colors. But uh, so this one, you can hit the refit button to bring up. Now, I don't have to refit anything because I took internal structure hits on this one, but I didn't lose anything. But this is where you basically will switch out weapons that you don't want. And you will probably doing this a lot. A lot of it goes to customizing your own play style. I think, uh, well, let's go take a look at one. I have definitely tricked out. Back out of here. Uh, we'll just go ahead and hit the repair button. It'll say, all right, repairing Katara will cost 22,200 C bills and take three. Proceed? Yes. And we'll see that the Kentaro is now popped up in our timeline. Work in progress, three days. But So let's go ahead and take a look at this Jaeger mech. And the Jaeger mech is 55 tons, four man's rifleman, I call it. Um, <coughs> this is the mech that my pilot, that I personally, my pilot. And so let's go ahead and take a refit. And I have modified this one. You can look at the stock combat roll. You can bring up the stock combat roll, and it'll tell you what the armor and the loadouts are supposed to be. Now, it's supposed to have two medium lasers, one medium laser in the right torso and in the left torso. Well, I stripped those medium lasers out. I got rid of those medium lasers and put on extra armor and more <laughs> ammunition because auto cannons are ammunition whores. And you can do that. You can take, you can strip parts off, you can put parts on, adjust the armor, the heat sinks, all that other stuff. As long as you've got the parts to do it, the hard points to do it, you know, you can do whatever you want. And you kind of see, like here in the right torso, you've got these icons. And that's basically how many hard points are on those locations. So you kind of ha are limited. It's like, so originally, uh, this Jaeger mech uh, can put, I had a medium laser in the right torso and left torso. Well, if you take a look at this, it's got two hard points for energy weapons. You can't put any ballistic weapons there because the mech, the mech chassis originally wasn't designed to have ballistic weapons in the torsos. They were originally designed for energy weapons. So I've got two hard points of energy weapons. If I wanted to, I could probably strip both of those AC-5 ammos out and put in, you know, two medium lasers on both sides if I wanted to. And then, of course, you know, you have your ammunition. So it wasn't, or, or missile hard points, I'm sorry. Not ammunition, but missile hard points, and uh, support weapons hard points, which are machine guns and flamethrowers. But if you kind of notice, uh, this mech, so this mech, I've, I've altered. I've, I've increased the armor, I've dropped the two medium lasers, put a little bit more ammunition in, because I think it only had one, uh, one ton of uh, AC-5 ammo. But you can kind of see, I've picked up a special AC-2 ammo, or AC-2 auto cannon. You can kind of see that with that little plus marker right there. And this increases bonus stability jab down. 
Stability is a mechanic they put into into the game to uh, to, to mimic uh, enough damage a mech takes it'll fall over, and it basically is called stability. Uh, ballistic weapons, auto cannons, missiles do the most stability damage. Lasers don't do very much stability. But when this auto cannon hits, it does plus ten stability damage, which increases my chances of knocking the enemy mech over. So that's pretty cool. So and you can mix and match, and these are you know these are all my all the equipment and gear that I have have acquired. You know, so and you've got okay, three stock AC ten ammo. I've got two AC twos, auto cannon twos. I've got six AC two ammos, which is good because I burn through a lot of AC two. And so on and so forth. So it's a good way of knowing at a, at a glance the equipment you've got. And if you want to put something in, all right, well, what do I need to buy from the store? And then, of course, stock equipment is normal heat sinks and range finders. Don't want to put any of these special equipments in the uh, arm, arm mod or the range. Not, not in that. But we are going to put them in one of the men. So this is, this is where you're going to spend time tricking out your mechs, basically. <laughs> and it takes time. Uh, yeah, no task scheduled. Back out. Uh, okay, it's my dragon. My dragon is the mech that punches people a lot, because the pilot I have in that has a good punching skill. So what we want to do, so let's go ahead and refit that, and we're going to want to put those actuators, the arm actuators. Yeah, the Coventry arm modifiers. Oh, it's four tons. Ah, crap. I, ooh, nah, four tons is too much. Four tons is way too much to do plus 15 melee damage. I mean, she does 90 damage now when she punches. If she punches now, it'll be 105. But at four tons, no, I'd have to, I'd have to lose too much to it. So that was a bad purchase on my part. I didn't see the tonnage on there. Uh, I probably should have looked a little bit closer. I can turn around and sell it. I'll, I'll lose it. But you know, it's, 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 it's if I were to mount it, I would just. Pull. Uh, where, where does it go? Slots to. Where would it go? Oh, it would go in the. You yeah, have support weapon hard points. Okay, so. Okay, the left torso has a support weapon hard point. Uh, maybe not. Where would it go? Standard four slots two. Oh, that's one slot. Oh, okay. So right arm. Let's 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 try taking out the AC. Oh no, because it's balanced. Okay, so yeah, I would have to I would have to put it there since it takes two slots. So, but that would require me taking out the AC five. Not a bad idea though. I take the AC five out. I take the two tons of ammo out. That'll give me. Six tons of pl six tons to play with. I could put probably a large laser and some armor. Ooh, okay. So we may have to think about that again. Choices. War gaming is about choices. These are the choices. So, but as it stands now, I'm not going to go ahead and stick that in there. Um, but the range finder. So I'm gonna jump back out of here. Discard any changes. Yeah, because we're not changing anything. But my recon mech, quote unquote, I'm running a running a two heavies and two mediums right now. Um, Black jet, or no, the no, not the Jaeger, not the Treb. Oh, I guess it is the Kentaro. Uh, my Kentaro is kind of my recon mech, if you want to call it that. Um, but it's already got a task in progress, so let's go ahead and stop that because they're trying to repair that, and let's go ahead and refit that. And let's try to get this range finder in there. Let's see. Range finder. It takes one slot. So where do we have a slot that we... Uh, oh, wait. No, not... Uh, oh, where did it go? Range finder. Oh, right there. Right in the head. There we go. Put it right in the head. Plus 25 meter view range. It's great for your recon neck to have. You can see, see a little bit further, and that's always a great thing. So we've got that in there. We'll go ahead and confirm. Now it changes it a little bit, so the work order is going to be $500 for one day with a mech rating of 9 um, to be able to, uh, oops, cancel that. Let's go ahead and also indicate we want to repair with the same work. 
We'll hit confirm, and now repairs with the installation are going to take four days instead of three days like it was earlier. So we've got that set. Next time, in, th in four days, the mech will be repaired. It'll have that rangefinder in it, and it's all good to go. We like that. All right, so we also have engineering, and this is this is the actual dropship uh, uh, upgrades, as it were. And you've got several different areas that you can upgrade, and they do all do different things for you. Because as you're playing the game, occasionally you'll get the random events that'll pop up with pop up, and you got to make decisions. And the decisions are easier. You get special benefits for having certain things, like down here in recreation. You know, you've got a hydroponics garden. Uh, there's a library. There's a lounge. Okay, there's a there's a gymnasium I haven't built yet. There's an improved library I haven't built yet. Upgraded lounge. But, you know, these, you know, you click on that. It will tell you, give gives plus one effect morale to your company. Uh, the purchase price, 225000 And the average cost, that's just how much in a month uh, you're, you're going to tack on to your operating costs and how long it does to get to that point. Completion, 15 days. And a little flavor text. Mech warriors have to maintain their physical conditioning. And doing so in their own quarters is claustrophobic and distracting. Luckily, the Argo has a full gymnasium, needing only repair and power. So you can only upgrade one thing at a time. So you got to take that into account. You know, there's power systems. If you want to unlock the really powerful uh, portions of the ship, you got to unlock the, all the massive power systems. It's like the the, the fully high capacity power conducts. Yeah, purchase seven hundred and twenty thousand. Average cost twenty seven hundred a month, and takes a month to do. But that'll give me the power to run everything. So you know, I've got all the structure and drive systems will make the ship go faster in space. Uh, habitat pods are just you know extra things. Mech bays, I was saying, I have a mech bay that I'm, that I'm in the process of, of putting together right now. And then repair and refit and training modules and med bays. So there's a whole bunch of other extra stuff you can spend your uh, uh, your your money on to get your ship fully upgraded. And then there's navigation, which you can go to the nav map. And for anybody who kind of knows the inner sphere. So here we have uh, Liao right here, Merrick. So this is the southern part out at the periphery. And this is kind of the Argo Reach where most of the storyline takes place. We've got uh, Fed Sons right there. No idea who that is. Just one of the periphery, periphery pilots. And another one of the periphery pirates. Or this is actually the, the bad guys we're fighting. Um, and so, you know, you can click on the planets and they kind of give you a good idea if each planet has the as attributes. And... The better chances of finding better gear are on the more populated planets. Um, and it'll kind of also give you an idea where travel contracts are too. But basically, you know, if you want to, you could usually when you're, when you're in a system, you might get one, maybe two contracts outside of that system. The rest of the systems are in, in the planet. Well, what if you wanted to, what if I actually really did want to go into Liao space and try to pick up a much better? I can jump there. Oh, no, travel not possible. possible. Travel restricted. Oopsie, so I couldn't go into the... Let's say I wanted to go over here. And it'll also give you kind of an idea what level planet, the, 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 the contracts on that planet you're going to come across. Like, eh, that's a two, that's a two. But this one right here, there's four. That one, that would be some real challenging. But if it's four challenge contracts... Let's take a look. Okay, attributes. It's a research, manufacturing, plague quarantine, inner level, inner sphere level civilization. You know, it's probably got rich Comstar presence moves. Probably buy some really, really good stuff there, and probably get some really good contracts. But they're going to be high level contracts. So this is just kind of the the, the map, the navigation map that you can kind of see uh, what's going on and what's around you and all that. Stuff. And then you know, down to the final thing, you've got captain's quarters. Uh, you can you can take a look at your your heraldry, and I, I thought it was really cool because they've got you know about a hundred, hundred and fifty different types of herald heraldic marks. None of them are 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 any of the known inner sphere merc groups or any or house units. These are all supposed to be you know your own. Um, and so yeah, I decided I went with the Viking helmet. My my company's name is Steel Whips Yarl Guard. I thought that was pretty cool. And then you have the, the the colors for the mechs. And you've got secondary colors. Accents. So you can know you can really trick out your Oops. 
that is the one kind of the one distracting thing you go into there it automatically resets your colors to base and so every time i go into this i gotta re-choose my color scheme again oops i like going for the uh urban camouflage of blues and grays and whites I always have uh, kind of like they've got the little Vallejo paint bottles on. Uh, but then you've got your, your reputation. Reputation with all the different Antriconus Combine, Commonwealth, Turing, Concordant, Free Fields League, Fed Sons, Capillion Confederation, Majesty of Cannabis, or the Arno Restoration, which, like I said, that's the storyline. And I'm allied with them because I've done a lot of freaking missions for them. Uh, Mercenary Review Board, my, I'm rated at 249. Every time you get my reputation from a mission, Oh, uh, and then you've got finances. So estimated operating costs. The Argo operating costs flat out are eighty thousand. Uh, I've got a second med bay open, so that reduces my heal times. That's thirteen thousand, and then you know all my mechs that I have on deck, twelve thousand roughly. Automation. That's one of my engineering. So all the different things that I've unlocked. Basically, my estimated monthly total and just operating costs is one hundred eighty-two thousand. Salaries. Are 165,000. So I'm looking at, you know, yeah, 347,000 creds a month operating expense. Now it's kind of good because, you know, I've gotten a couple of really juicy missions recently and I'm up to like 6 million. But you start off at the beginning of the game, it's like, man, I got one or two months worth of operating costs. It's like, ugh, how am I going to make it? And you'll occasionally fail. You don't keep an eye on that. You will you will go bankrupt and the game will end and you'll have to restart. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I was wanting to jump into gameplay, but I kind of bloviated or rambled on too long, but I did want to give people a look at Battletech, the new game, Hairbrain Studios, uh, Paradox. There is a multiplayer aspect. I'm not a big multiplayer fan. I'll play multiplayer with friends. I don't do blind invites or anything like that. I just, you know, I'm not a competitive player anymore. I just want to sit back. You'll throw dice at friends and maybe drink occasionally when I'm gaming. Um, so if you know if you if you if you're into the, the the multiplayer, you can do the lance on lance type stuff. Not for me. You know it is there. Uh, was gonna try to get to actual gameplay. I think we'll save that for the next video because I've gone on to. But again, it, this is old school BattleTech. It's something I adored when I was in high school, and this this just brings me right back to it. I mean this. Like, like I said, there, there are mechanical changes and mechanical differences, made, but it's all under the hood stuff that you don't really notice. And it just feels like old school battle tech. We'll be getting into gameplay in the next video. Got anything else? I don't think so. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms? In the comment section. I'll see everybody next time. See ya!